Welcome to the God realm, y'all. Peace to the gods, peace to the creatresses. I want to say peace and great love to my 6 to 22 strand, 7 to 9 ether follicle, selenium, you melanin base family, the black gods of this earth, the black creatresses of all of these solar systems and galaxies and all of that good shit. I just came out of a deep, deep meditation, cantation, affirmation, all these different aspects in one, provocation, and um, we in the guard realm right now. And when we are in the guard realm, we want to abandon all forms of humanity. We want to abandon all forms of ego and allow our intelligence, our wisdom, our knowledge, our understanding, overstanding, and understanding to prevail over all of that. The first thing we must do in the guard realm is we must acknowledge the seven laws. I'm not going to make this a whole big thing. I'm going to do this real fast. We got mentalism, mind is all. We got correspondence above and below. We got rhythm, ebb and flow, in and out. We got cause and effect, source over surface, surface and source. We have um, gender and polarity. Everything has a feminine and masculine. Everything has an electric and a magnetism. Everything has a form of its polar opposite still coming to a center once they come together and create that spark or create that life. And then, of course, vibration. There's nothing in all existence that is not moving, that is not having a form of expansion or a form of frequency and vibratory rate. Acknowledging that, let's understand that the guard realm does not heed to endless laws and, and statutes and principles and all this nonsense. When we're dealing with the guard realm, we're dealing with seven laws. We're dealing with four plus elements. I'll get into that. And then, of course, in order to get to the guard round, we must start with the three keys. I should have did that the other way, but y'all going to get it. We must start with the three keys. Source knowledge, divine ascension, and infinite expansion. This is These are the three keys into the guard round. After that, we must understand that everything is about mastering the basics. Okay. There's no need to try to be the absolute best at whatever you're doing. You know why? Because that's dealing with your ego. There's no need to look for perfection in anything because to be honest with you, perfection is death. And that's a whole nother situation. Because anything that perfects itself to complete perfection is death ready to begin a whole nother cycle of life. You see? The reason why you die from a disease or die from cancer or whatever you would like to call it, all of these patent man-made created bullshit is because that so-called disease or that so-called virus has perfected itself within your body. Therefore, its existence is over in order to start a whole new cycle of existence. So perfection is death. We must master the basics. In order to enter the guard realm, the first thing you must do is obtain the three keys. Source knowledge, divine ascension, and infinite expansion. Next, we must master the seven laws. You must know the seven laws up and down, sideways, in and out. All right? And then, of course, we have the four plus elements. When we speak about the four plus elements, we want to make sure that we are utilizing each element and relating it to all forms of existence and matter. Because at the end of the day, we're dealing with four plus elements. I say four plus on purpose. I know y'all don't understand sometimes when I say that, but I say four plus because as far as the basic understanding, we only are aware of four, but there are technically about seven or eight. Now, the fifth one, of course, would be the ether. You see what I'm saying? And then, of course, we have reflection, which people are not aware of. Reflection is a form of element. We have thought, which is a form of element, and we have sound, which is a form of element. We need to understand that as gods, we must see everything as what they are at its purest state. Atoms, vibrations, frequencies, and elements that make up a whole and that manifest into a physical existence that we want to refer, that we want to, uh, refer to as a person, a thing, or a place, so on and so forth. Each one of those things, person, place, and things, which by the way are three degrees that our ancestors gave the recessive that he turned into 33 but that's a whole nother situation person place and things 
Each person has a specific vibration and frequency. Each thing has a specific vibration and frequency. Each place has a specific vibration and frequency. The only thing that changes is the height and the degrees of those vibrations and frequencies and the densities in which they accumulate upon themselves in order to create physical matter. The difference between a person, place, and thing. We also must understand when dealing in the God realm, you must abandon your ego. When I say abandon your ego, I mean there is no right or wrong. We have to get over that. There is no right or wrong. There is the higher and the lower self. There is the higher and lower frequency, higher and lower vibration. Now, please, let's not act fucking retarded. This doesn't mean throw your fucking babies out the window. Fuck no. But this also means do not turn anything into a fucking religion. Because your existence in this third dimensional realm that you chose to come down here upon is expansion. Nothing else. So whatever you become focused upon and you build a box around yourself, you have went against your purpose of your existence on this third dimensional plane. This is why no matter what I study and no matter what level I supposedly reach, I do not stay stuck on that one level. I expand beyond it. No matter whether I'm studying um, ancient African history, whether I'm studying Kemet, Nile Valley civilization, whether I come over here to a Mexum, Turtle Island and all of this stuff and study Moorish paradigms and history and the indigenous people that we falsely refer to as Aboriginal and all of these different things. I don't get stuck anywhere because once I reach that level, I keep expanding past that level to expand within and without. Within the God realm, we must acknowledge that all things have a purpose and have an existence. No matter how mundane, no matter how insignificant we feel they are, understand that that's your ego calling something insignificant. It's your ego as a man or a woman that looks at the penny on the floor and sees nothing. But it is the intelligence and it is the awareness and observation of the God mind that sees the penny on the floor as money, as currency. And currency is a form of force and power, electricity. Let's get into the fact that a god is a creator or creatress or manifestor. Okay? We must understand that a god understands every word that is spoken is a form of spell upon him or herself. Okay? We also must understand that a god understands that the four plus element, now we're speaking about tone or sound, has a form of resonance or frequency upon the physical human body, able to change certain things with repetition, whether it's your cells to vibrate differently at higher or lower frequencies, okay, or whether it is your subconscious to be trained through repetition and programmed to reverse your current conditioning. This is God realm, you understand? So what I'm saying is, fuck everything. What I'm saying is, see past your feeling. See past your belief. See past your ego. See past your desire. And allow your will, allow your will, allow the force to emanate and activate the higher sources. Because your will is still a low form, but it's necessary because it's the fuel that drives what you are going to manifest, what you are going to uh, create on this third dimensional plane. I want to go into the science of affirmations. We must understand that every single word within this bastardized English vocabulary is attached with a form of connotation that was given by this recessive. So until we can speak fluently, the indigenous tones and the indigenous languages from metal nature to all different levels, we must take this negative bastardized English language and invoke the spirit and divinity back into it. So when I call you a king, my brother, I'm telling you that you possess knowledge, understanding, and noble guidance in order to be a king. When I call you a queen, my sister, I'm telling you that you possess Qualities uniting essential earth nurturing in order to be a queen. I don't call you a queen based on their definition and their etymology coming from Quinn and uh, symbolizing whore. I don't call you a king coming from their etymology and definition uh, related to kin 
and being of kin to a nation, so and so forth, or related to. I call you these things by invoking the energy through my subconscious and my intentions by saying you are a king because you have obtained knowledge. You are a king because you have an understanding of that knowledge. You are a king because you have become noble in your actions. And you are a king because those three things have given you the ability to guide. Not because you have a crown. Not because you have a Bentley. Not because you have stacks of money. But because of those four things I just named. I call you a queen by invoking my intentions upon that word, giving you this title based on the fact that as woman, you have qualities. Just as you're multidirectional, you also have multiple qualities. Now, I'm not saying man does not have multiple qualities, but what I'm saying is the level that woman can reach effortlessly due to the combination of her qualities are far beyond man. So you have qualities that must be united. These qualities that must be united are essential. These qualities that must be united are essential to the earth with you as our earth. And last but not least, as our earth, which we call you the mother, you must be nurturing. You must be a nurturer. So therefore, you must possess qualities within unity that are essential to earth Nurturing. We getting it? Let's go into the fact that every single word holds a different level of vibration and a different level of frequency. When I say money, what do you see in your mind? What is your vision? What is your symbolism? What is the image? Because when I see money, in my mind, I see stacks of paper. I see fiat currency. I see fake dollars that mean nothing. OK, when I hear money, I see dollar bills being thrown in the air in a strip club. I see stacks being counted out in a bank somewhere. The point of the matter is when I use this word money, I'm using a condensed, limited form with an already built in connotation to it. So the question is, what is the correct word that I want to use instead of money? Prosperity. What do you see when you hear prosperity? When I hear prosperity, the symbols and the images that I see are limitless. I see land. I see resources. I see gold. I see water. I see love for multiple women. I see love for multiple brothers. I see children. I see all forms of abundance, love, quality within one word called prosperity. We must understand that the words that we speak amongst ourselves create spells upon ourselves. So we must be very careful with the vocabulary we choose as gods. Gods speak a very specific way and then also gods have the Ability to speak anyway, because once you reach a certain level, any word that you speak and you say, you will automatically put your own intentions into it to make it your own word per se. So if motherfucker, fuck this bullshit, suck dick, pussy, all these different words offend you and throw you off the information that's being conveyed to you by any teacher or any person on any level. Welcome to the enslavement of your ego. Because it is your ego that makes you feel uneasy or uncomfortable about specific words being said that you would never know the definition of if you were never taught the negative connotation that comes with that word. Because I can go up to a Chinese person and tell them to suck my dick. But if they don't speak English, they can't be offended by that word. So what gives the word power? The combination of your intentions... And how big your ego is. Because there's no word in the English language that any human being could speak to me and get me out of my God realm in my era. Now, by all means, you put hands on me, we got problems. By all means, you put hands on what I own, my property, my queen. Yeah, I said property. You put hands on something that I possess and cherish with love. Yes, that's when my humanity will rise. That's when my beast 
will rise. That's where my animalistic and root chakra will rise. But other than that, there is no verbal word that you can say to me as a man that will get me out of my pocket and out of my guard realm. Okay? As gods, we must enter over and understand that there is no death. We must know the difference between fear and danger. Some of us have already heard the different um, acronyms in certain aspects to address fear, false evidence appearing real, so on and so forth. But danger is the observation of intelligence being put into use. If I see that I am walking towards a cliff, I am observing that there is danger coming upon me. But because I can observe danger doesn't necessarily mean that I need to feel fear. Two different things. We seem to associate many things as one thing. Which we can do that if we choose. But if we want to separate our ego and our intelligence and our observation, we must separate the frequencies and connotations to specific words that we use as well as separate our ego from observation of situations. Some of y'all might notice that I don't wear any jewelry. I don't wear any crystals and stones and jewelries and rings and watches and all of that stuff. Yes, I used to <laughs> a long time ago when my ego needed a, a Movado. You see what I'm saying? When my ego needed a, um, a white gold bracelet. You know, that was my thing. I was I was a white gold silver type of person later finding out that those are the uh, metals of duality. Silver is a feminine, uh, feminine metal. OK, silver is duality because silver can emit and absorb. It's a transmitter and emitter. Gold is masculine because gold is one directional gold. Gold is intensity. OK. But um, I've always been into white gold, silver, platinum, whatever the case may be. The point of the matter is, once you reach a certain level, being a god is about needing nothing. Now, I want to make this clear. I'm not saying my beautiful queens to take off your beautiful crystals and your, and your gems and your stones. Hell no, I'm not saying that. You know why? Because as the feminine principle, you are everything and everything is you. So you are the representation of all forms of beauty, all forms of crystals, all forms of rubies, all forms of natural elements. So when you dress your body in these things, you are only paying homage to what you are. Now, brothers, I'm not saying you can't do that either. But what I'm saying is, is it your ego driving this? Is it a specific persona that are using? Perfect example. What I'm wearing right now. This is a persona. This is a persona. It is. Now, see, the fact that my ego does not rule me, I can tell you this shit don't mean nothing. I use this as a tool because when I invoke the white cloth, when I invoke a specific energy, I need every form of level to trick my subconscious into activating something within me. That connects me with that energy or that spirit until I reach another level where I could just snap my fingers and be there. Because everything is levels. That's another thing as gods we understand. There is no time. Time is now. Now is past. Now is present. Now is future. There is no time. There's only cycles, transitions, and levels. Okay? I want to talk about the fact that as gods, we must understand that everything we must make a ritual. Let's 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 go through the three keys. First key is source knowledge. We could get through that real quick. Anything that you study, anything that you involve yourself in, you must go directly to the source. If your motherfucking ass want to be a goddamn Christian, you better study the Gnostics. If you're not doing that, then you'll, you're not following the three keys. Therefore, you will never enter the God realm and you'll forever be a slave to the third dimensional realm. Okay? There you go. If you want to be a, a Muslim or Islam, study the Rig Veda. Okay? Study uh, Hammurabi. Okay? Study the source steps that led to that surface religion. 
Divine Ascension. Now, what is this about? Divine Ascension is basically another way of saying we need to learn how to deify ourselves. We need to understand that within the God realm, you are your own deity. Within the God realm, every spirit and energy and deity that you provoke, every spirit and energy and deity that you want to absorb or that you want to awaken lives within you. Therefore, we don't pray as gods. We command. Let me say that one more time. We don't pray as gods. We command. So when I invoke the energy of Obatala, when I evoke the energy of Shango, when I evoke the energy of Jehudi, when I evoke the energy of Asar, when I evoke the energy of Olodumare, when I do this, I am commanding what I already am. I am activating what's locked within my genetics and awakening the God that's within me. Making myself more divine and therefore ascending. With divinity. Which is divine ascension. The second key. And lastly. Infinite expansion. Never. 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 Stop. Humans stop. Humans get comfortable somewhere. And they stop. Humans get comfortable. With RBG. And they stop. Humans get comfortable. With Moorish science and history and then they stop humans get comfortable with Kemet, Tameri, Egypt and then they stop as gods we don't stop anywhere we are about infinite expansion because as gods we are one with the omniverse which has no beginning and has no end so therefore you have no beginning and have no end so how dare you stop any place and become content at any level Let's go into the aspect of what a God practices. You must make everything a ritual. And you must understand that we worship nothing. As I experience this quote unquote conscious community, so on and so forth, as I experience all these different forms of uh, knowledge of self, consciousness, yada, yada, yada. One thing I'm going to bring up right now as an example is veganism. We tend to take something and we turn it into a religion. Whenever you tell me not to eat something because it's going to hurt me or it's going to do something wrong to me or it's bad and it's not good and this is that and blah, blah, blah. And, oh, Dr. Sabi said this and Laila Africa said that and who are both two men I strongly respect. But I'm a motherfucking God. <laughs> fuck you gonna tell me I can't eat brown rice how you gonna tell me don't eat a lemon because it's a fucking hybrid I don't give a shit you know why because I'm a motherfucking god and why is that because everything that I put inside my body is not for any form of nutrition because that's a fucking illusion I'm gonna say that again Everything that I put inside my body has nothing to do with fucking nutrition because that's a fucking illusion. Does your atoms eat? Does your cells eat? Does a neutron, electron, or proton need to eat? No. I say this to say, yes, I do not eat flesh. Yes, I practice a form of lack of a better word or title, vegetarian, whatever the hell y'all want to call it, but I am far from a vegan. And why am I far from a vegan? Because I do not worship food. Vegan is not my religion and food is not my God. Every meal or every form of matter or sustenance that we refer to as food that I put within my vessel, I put within my vessel as an offering. I cook and prepare food as a ritual. I eat that food as a ceremony. A ceremony to my so-called taste buds. A ceremony to my physical senses. 
and an offering to my divine vessel within this third dimensional realm. Here's the key. Gods don't need food. So if you're not practicing fasting consistently, you're not a part of the God realm. Now, for the feminine principle, I do not suggest or advise absolute pure fasting, meaning putting nothing in your body whatsoever. Okay? Right now, I've been on a fast currently for two days. I don't practice any rituals or any invocations or um, any form of, I don't even like using the word meditation, but I don't practice these things unless I'm on a fast. Okay? Because I must become God to do godly things. So there's times that I'm not God when I'm eating. I'm not God when I'm eating. Number two, a God understands, excuse me, what am I talking about number two? I'm talking about all these things and going to number two. What am, what am I talking about? A God understands less is more. I'm going to say that again. Less is more. What do I mean? Instead of worrying about whether your milk is soy or almond milk. Instead of worrying about whether this is GMO and whether that's a hybrid lemon and blah, blah. Whether that banana has seeds in it. Instead of worshiping food and creating a devil food and a Jesus food. As gods, we eat less. Currently, I only eat one meal a day. And that meal is not for my nutrition. It's not because I'm hungry. What you think it's for? It's the offering to my God self in my vessel. It's the ritual of serving the God within me. It's the ceremony I give to my senses in this physical body. It's not for nutrition. It's not for health. Because as we should understand, health starts in the mind before anything. I find it interesting in this conscious community how we constantly speak of mind is all. Mind is everything. Universe is mental. Um, uh, uh, the, spirit, the spirit guides me. The universe guides me. But then we turn around and say, don't eat that lemon, it's a hybrid. So what, the, the lemon going to kick my ass now? The reason we don't eat certain forms of flesh is because they are low in vibration and you are absorbing the DNA of an animal. And gods don't lay with animals. Let me say that again. Gods don't lay with animals. So not only do we not lay with animals because to lay with an animal is to exchange the DNA of an animal and the frequency of the animal and the lower so-called energy of that animal is the same way we don't digest certain animals because you're absorbing the DNA of that animal. You're absorbing the frequency of that animal. You're absorbing the death, the, the different forms that that animal went through when you absorb it. Not for nutrition, not because of health, but because if we want to reach a truly God mind and God state, we must not dwell in the root chakra. We must dwell in the crown. Let's see. I want to go into, um, I want y'all to check out real quick. I got the goons with me. I got the goons with me tonight. The reason I got the goons with me tonight is like I told y'all, I just was uh, in a deep, I don't, I don't know why I don't like that word meditation. I, I think I think that we've taken, I think that we've taken all the uh, essence out of that word. I was in a deep cleansing of a dimension. Utilizing the energy of who we refer to as Obatala and who we refer to as Shango. Utilizing the element of fire. 
which is all around me as we speak. But I want to go into the fact that, once again, all of these deities are my servants. I do not worship them. I do not pray to them. I command them. And just like they are my servants, as a God, I am a servant. Because I am a manifester. I am a creator. I am a generator, operator, and destroyer. Now we touched on the seven laws, the three keys, the four elements. We touched on deities. We touched on making everything a ritual. We touched on affirmations. Understand, once again, let's go back to this. What is this? This is my ego. This is a persona, okay? This is a persona. I know what this is, but I use it as a tool to enhance my level of subconscious absorbing of whatever I'm doing. So I must place myself within white cloth. I must place myself within gold over my throat chakra, over my uh, solar plex in order to enhance the purpose of what I'm participating within a ritual. White people do it all the fucking time because they have no choice. We have a choice. We don't have to do this. We can be butt naked and make shit happen. But I choose to do this because I understand every single thing has a vibration. This persona that I'm wearing right now has a vibration. The color white has a vibration. The color gold or yellow has a vibration. So when I stack all these things together and I condense them, and utilize them as the tools they are. It enhances my intentions and my purpose for whatever I'm doing. So I say that to say, understand when you are utilizing your ego and admit to it. Because this is what makes your ego microscopic. You will never hear me say I don't have an ego, but you will always hear me say my ego is microscopic to my intelligence. So I know what I'm doing. There'll be times you'll see me sitting here with a tank top, not giving a shit. But because of what I just finished, what I just did with my ritual and my cantations and all of this stuff, I put on a persona to enhance and program my subconscious as I saw myself invoking the energy of the white cloth. Usually, I don't like making videos like this where I'm just sitting here talking into a camera. But... Since the spirit has guided me out of quote unquote Instagram for a second or two. And since I know there is no form of coincidence and there is no form of accident, I understand that there is a reason why certain things are removed. Because understand when you reach certain levels and when you raise certain frequencies and vibrations of yourself or of your vessel, People will disappear. Your environment will change. The directions you go will change. And you must not look at this as anything bad or good. But look at it as an experience of further expansion. Because that's what it is. So because spirit has guided me outside of the so-called social media aspect to an extent. I must get out of my box of not doing videos the way I like to do them and understand that there is a reason for the current situations that have occurred. I must utilize the current outlets that I possess and I must grow past what I like and what I dislike in order to enhance what I am. Because what I like and what I dislike comes from my preference, which comes from my ego. Understand that. What is preference? What is your preference and why? 
Would your preference be the same if you were born in India? Would your preference be the same if you was born in 1920? We must understand that what we call preference is a conditioning. It's a conditioning of your environment, your society, combined with the survival of your ego. I did a video on this a while back, dealing with how we love what we know. We think we have a preference for long blonde hair. We think we have a preference for light green eyes. We think we have a preference for light skin or dark skin. We think we have a preference for certain things. But what we don't understand is that preference comes from a combination of a conditioning, a subconscious, an ego, and an environment. Because at one time on this planet, the blacker you were, the more beautiful you were. And now we're currently at a stage where the lighter you are, the more beautiful you are. Now, of course, I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to the general public. I'm talking to the general mind. I like having a back and forth because if y'all notice, I never come to the table with an organized fashion. Unless I am on another form of platform where I am dealing with a host who is asking me or who has already prepared me to come with an organized fashion as I did with homosexuality, so on and so forth. I do not like to enter any form of dialect with an organized fashion. Why is that? Because when we enter things with an organized fashion, we actually create a box and certain forms of limitations that we are not able to surpass due to that organization of that specific template or topic that was pre-chosen. So therefore, I like to come off a random aspect where you hear my videos, I'll be sitting with a few brothers and we'll be They'll be throwing out random questions, and then next thing you know, I'll have to dip into my subconscious for the answers. That's God mind. That's God realm. But this right here, basically I'm sharing with y'all what I just went through. Well, by the way, because I just said sharing, I only completely forgot. A God is a scientist. A God is is an explorer. A God conducts experiments. What I just did before I got on here was an experiment. I didn't come with a specific form of rules or how and how not to do something. I took random sources and knowledges of how and how I've been doing certain things and every now and then I'll switch up an experiment with what I experience. Notice experiment and experience are damn near one and the same. An experience is how you build wisdom. Knowledge is only accumulation of information and only becomes power when it is applied. Man is knowledge because man is labor. Woman is wisdom because she is experience, which just means she is being. Say that one more time. Man is knowledge because man is labor. Woman is wisdom because she's the experience of just being. My experience that I just had, I'm not going to lie. I started off uncomfortable due to the fact that I wasn't necessarily prepared completely. But um, I do my rituals, I do my occult practice or meditation or whatever you want to call it when I'm fasting on purpose, only when I'm fasting. I wasn't completely prepared with the correct amount of tools necessary, but that doesn't mean I don't do what I just did because at the end of the day, is there a right or wrong? No. And everything is a form of scientific experiment. So I utilized what I had. Until the end 
of my experiment and experience of this form of meditation, incantation, and um, dimensional travel, shall I say. Once again, I don't like using that word meditation. Only to the end that I experienced something that I really can't even describe the feeling. You know how sometimes when we become in fear, we kind of laugh hysterically. It's almost like a mechanism we deal with with fear. It was almost like that experience, but subtract the fear. Now, I just told you one of the four plus elements is reflection. During my forms of incantation, meditation, whatever the hell we want to call it, I utilize a mirror. <laughs> even as even as I'm thinking it right now, I'm 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 getting that feeling back that I felt when this was happening to me. I utilize mirrors, okay? Which is the element of reflection. As I stared in that mirror utilizing the element of fire simultaneously. Huh. I don't even I really don't even know how to really express this, but um my face disappeared and all I saw was blackness and the glimmer of my eyes. For some strange reason, and I know I'm going to lose a lot of y'all here because a lot of y'all are still human, but for some strange reason, I began to chant the multiple names for who we refer to as Satan. <laughs> It was it was it was hilarious. Now before that, I was invoking every form of deity or spirit that I was consciously aware of, from um, Osar, uh, Jehudi, Anubis, Obatala, um, uh, Shango. Um, basically, every every spirit or energy or deity that came into my mind, I spoke it out loud to myself while scrying, while looking into that mirror or into that gateway within my own eyes. After speaking and naming all those deities, <laughs> my face began to darken. And as my face began to darken, I was overwhelmed with a Luciferian energy. It was it was it was very interesting. I won't even it wasn't even bothersome. It wasn't even scary or anything like that. It was it was just I, I, I was filled with immense, I can't even call it happiness, because it wasn't happiness. I, I'm trying to think of the specific word. It was this, it was a form of a combination of surprise and, uh, man, excitement and um, anxiety. I think that's the best way I could really describe it. Those three things combined in one. I'm missing something else too, but that's the, that's the best way I could really describe it. As I'm looking into my face and chanting or putting a spell on myself, invoking the light bearer, which I am, because I am light. I am the fire element. I am the son who became the father order. My face began to darken and my face disappeared. I swear it disappeared <laughs> as I'm looking in this mirror. With a flame in front of me, my face disappeared. And I was overwhelmed with all those different feelings, anxiety, excitement, um, all these all these different feelings, but that were in the same branch of uh, anticipation, excitement. They were all in the same branch. No fear whatsoever. No weirdness, no reluctance, no hesitation. Once again, because I know what the fuck I am. And I know there's no such fucking thing as Satan or Jesus. I know those are nothing but different polarities of energy. I know there's a nothing besides different polarities and spectrums of frequencies and vibrations within one existence in one mind. But that's one thing I'll share. The beginning of the whole thing was a whole nother thing that I'm not going to share, but it definitely was a journey. 
I want to wrap this up by saying, my creatresses, my gods, overstand there is no such thing as good or bad. Overstand that there are only higher and lower self, higher and lower frequencies, higher and lower vibrations. Overstand as gods, we are scientists. We must experiment. We must put things into play. We must apply the knowledge that we receive. We must experience in order to gain wisdom. Overstand, we must get into rituals. We must study occult science. You are not a god if you are not studying occult science. One more time. You are not a god if you are not studying some form of occult science. I'm not saying you got to be drowning in a cult. I'm not saying you got to be uh, 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 Aleister Crowley or some shit like that. But what I'm saying is, if you do not incorporate some form of occult science, which is nothing but hidden, if you are not incorporating some form of occult science and metaphysics into your everyday life or into whatever you pay the most focus upon, you're not in the God realm. You're still a human, okay? Because an occultist and a God understands there really is nothing to fear. There is no devil that's coming to get you. There is no Baphomet that's coming to get you. There is no monster that's coming to get you. Okay? So we understand that all these are nothing but different levels and forms of energies in order to tap into, in order to activate the God within yourself. And which speed up the activation and the ability of manifestation and creation. Which once again is what a God is. A creatress and a man, Ephester. Notice the word manifest or manifester or manifestation. Notice the word festering. Festering is almost like a boiling. You see what I'm saying? It's like a boiling. It's, it's, it's a rising of energy. Man is motivation. Motive and action. Woman is inspiration. Internal spiraling action. A woman can inspire you, excuse me, a woman can inspire you without one single word, without one single necessary action. She can inspire you with her beauty alone. But a man must use his drive and his action to motive action or motivate you. Which motive eight, activate. Because man is the physical, woman is the spiritual. Understand what you are. Embrace your nature. Embrace your polarity. Embrace your gender. Stop fighting against what you are and what you're here to do. Understand that you chose this paradigm. Your parents, the shit that we're taught, I didn't ask to come in this world, bullshit. You chose this paradigm. You chose your parents to go through, to get here. So I don't give a fuck if your parent is a fucking crackhead. I don't give a fuck if your papa's a bank robber. I don't give a fuck who your mama and your daddy is. You chose them as a vehicle to come into this third dimensional realm at this specific time and paradigm for a specific purpose. You must tap in, tap within yourself and find that purpose and understand that the reason why you were 